as Nigeria continues to explore possible ways of gaining control over a spiraling surge of COVID-19. The answer might just lie in information and communication technology. Analysts are saying that a healthy combination of information dissemination and effective deployment of basic technological devices can create awareness about hotspots as well as enhance planning and logistics for intervention. For a comprehensive discussion around this, we are now being joined by Chris Uwaje, founder and chairman, Mobile Software Solutions. Good morning, Mr. Uwaje. Welcome to the program. Thank you for joining us on The Morning Show. Good morning, Mr. Wajib. Good morning, Dr. Bati. Yes, thank you and for having us. And as well as Adesua. Yes. I'm happy to be here. Thank you for thank having me. Thank you very me. much. Well, quickly, is it too late in the day for us to deploy uh, information and communications technology? And if it is not late, uh, what do we need to do? What kind of lessons can we possibly learn in this regard for, from other jurisdictions? I mentioned South Korea, but also in China too. You see that contact tracing, testing, all of that is uh, effectively driven by uh, technological uh, solutions. But here, we seem to be a bit behind. Is there something we can do? And anyway, we take a break, Mr. Wajib. When we return, uh, you'll get the opportunity to uh, respond to the question. We'll be right back. Welcome back to The Morning Show here on the Arise News Channel. Still with us? is Chris Uwaje, founder and chairman, Mobile Software Solutions. Mr. Uwaje, thank you for staying with us. I'd ask you a question about ways in which tech solutions can help combat uh, COVID-19 and how Nigeria can be a part of that uh, process. Thank you, Dr. Bati. Uh, in the first place, uh, let us uh, break it down mm. in the sense that the technology we're talking about is really uh, about research. So when you need technology or you want technology, you need to look at your, res your research base. And of course, this research base, you need to look at uh, the triangle connection of uh, academia, industry, and government. These are the layers, and I heard you talk about uh, the confusion of decision-making process, and why are we not there? Because this triangle is disengaged. They are in silos. Government is in silo deciding about COVID, the industry is in silo deciding about COVID, and research or academia is more or less cut off from this triangular base. So if we want to get it right, just like other people have gotten it right, technology is about human. It's not just the physical thing that, that we see. The human concept that leads to the process of delivering technology is really what we are talking about. And Nigeria is not to want about this. Why are we not using the diaspora connection, drafting them like an army? Because we are at war. We need to draft our total resources. Other people are using Nigerians' human resources abroad. And even here, our nurses, sometimes when you look at the, the wars, people have been drafted abroad. So what are we talking about? We are talking about sitting down within this triangle representative and ensuring that academia, industry, and of course, the government is there to take final decision. Government cannot be the technical surgeon and decision-making person and the researcher as one time. No, you need to constitute that theme at multiple layers to ensure that we can do this. And that's what other countries do. And of course, I also consent with what you have earlier addressed. Why is government not funding these processes all over the place, vaccine, research, human resources, uh, digital awareness in terms of the media and play. A lot of our behavior and our attitudinal form is really shaped by the media. And if government collaborates effectively with the media, who of course, uh, Nigerian media have been known to be very uh, spontaneously internet intelligence in delivering all this then automatically we can have better results. I've not seen the, the, the mortuaries where the, uh, the COVID-19 patients are when they die. Media should have access to be able to have images of this to shock Nigerians so that their behavior can turn around. And media can tell a better story about the seriousness of this COVID-19 than government can tell. 
because media images, you know, tell thousand stories. Media uh, narratives with the victims can tell thousand stories that will scare us to make sure that our behavior, you know, is really curtailed. Why scientists and the technologists and industry is doing their best to make sure that they can deliver the practical solutions, as it were. Now we are talking about vaccine. If the vaccine comes, who would deliver the syringe? The syringes are different from the vaccine. How many millions do we need? Can Nigerians provide syringes? Can they manufacture it over time? How long is the COVID going to last? Is it just a one-time check break? No. You're talking about the next 18, 24 months. What are we going to do? What is the national plan for COVID engagement within the vaccine environment? These are what the triangular environment of academia, uh, industry, and the government should sit down together, including the media, to be able to say, this is what we're going to do, and this is the state of the matter. I think that is what we need to do. Other countries are doing it, and they are really not better than us. But in the decision-making process, they seem to be uh, getting it right. Well... We have Ministry of Science and Technology. We have several research institutes. Uh, but beyond the challenge of funding and lack of collaboration, which you are alluding to, what else can we do? Because we are, as we have seen, the countries that are digitally driven and technology savvy are ahead of, uh, uh, and are less impacted by the virus. So what is the future of ICT in Nigeria? Thank you very much. I think uh, what we need to probably drum home is that the future of work, the future of behavior, the future of learning, education has changed. And unless we bring a blueprint and a design of how we are going to address our future and how we're going to manage it, then automatically we'll be found wanting. And technology is at the core. Technology is the center of gravity. Now, it has always been, all right? So what we are saying is that you need to now recreate the, the resource of our education into the technology realm. Education environment has to change. Teachers must be paid right. Research must be funded. And one aspect of the missing link is that we just think that, oh, all technology know-how and whatever that comes on to the industry is really industry and stock market based. That is a fallacy. If you go to governments all over the, the or countries all over the world, covertly, government funds the development of technology from the infusion of research into the market. You look at the US, look at China, you go to Silicon Valley, you see all these companies, it's soft loan. And these soft loans are coming from the government. And industry alone cannot do what other big techs are doing. That is why they are taking over our technology here. And when you say about technology, you're talking about intellectual property. The IP is what they come to buy. The investment that are coming into the tech environment here in Nigeria. In fact, Nigeria started to lead the whole of Africa in terms of funding. But we don't own these companies. If, if government funds the technology and local or ind indigenous content, then automatically you'll be having a lot of IP that can resonate all over. And then internal investment in terms of local con co content can now begin to resonate in our children. And don't forget that the issue of, that we are talking about is not just the physical 5G. We, 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 we talked about the 5G about three, four months ago, and Dr. Ruben Abati was alluding to, you know, the fallacy intent that, that were there. And now we are on. But what's next? What is going to come up next? A lot of things are going to come up. As we said, education, future of work, artificial intelligence, uh, augmented reality, a lot of things are going to combine. And we are talking about sitting, situating the, 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 the solution within our academia and industry. That's the handshake. Then government can come over and now say, what's the problem? How do we fund it? All so right. these are some of the things that I can allude to make sure that uh, we can get this mm -hmm. things right. All right. Uh, thank you so much for that insight, uh, sir. I mean, great background. And I hear birds tweeting 
at your back, which I'm really, really excited about. But uh, most importantly, you said it all. And it has to be said that a country that has not developed its tech definitely will have challenges. And those challenges are coming home to roost. That means COVID-19. But I want to link what tech should have done with the current reality. This NIN registration and this harmonizing of NIN number and SIM card had missed a pandemic. Yesterday, there were pictures in the media of how a lot of people trooped to these centers, you know, to be able to make, do their NIN registration, violating every social distancing rule possible. And somebody will have thought that with a common handshake, you know, across APIs, where these data sets are stored, we should have done all of that. I mean, what's your take on all of this, Brohaha, at least a pandemic? I will take a short break now. When we return, uh, Mr. Wajay will still join us. Please stay tuned. Welcome back to The Morning Show here on the Arise News Channel. Mr. Chris Uwaje, founder and chairman of Mobile Software Solutions, uh, is still with us. Thank you for your patience, sir. Well, I mean, uh, sorry about that, uh, you know, small hitch, but we're back with you now. And you were going to comment on the confusion over uh, national identification numbers and what Rufa described as the need for a handshake, you know, across the uh, various platforms instead of this confusion. Uh, very risky confusion that we're witnessing. Thank you, Dr. Abati. I think uh, the slip uh, that you mentioned uh, about the disconnection is just a part of the technology because you can know it all. There's this ignorance uh, of things that also research is trying to ensure that uh, you know, we can mitigate. Now, moving forward, you mentioned about uh, the name aspect. But let me properly uh, retreat and uh, bring you back a little bit to national population data, because that comes before the name. The name is really a mechanism to be able to appraise those who have been born, okay, as Nigerians, okay, or foreigners who are living here to have an identity. Whereas you should have, of course, a database of life and death. Within that potpourri is where you now mine the data for specific purposes. Mm. The population data, the immigration data, the working data, the uh, uh, labor data, and all what's not. So this is the, the comprehensive architecture that must be on ground. If we have a real good architecture of scientists and data collectors and minings that you have. These are professions, they are special professions that has to be in place, and of course, with the legislation that we can tie out to it. And then let's come now to the technology that makes it happen. You're talking about the software. You're talking about the servers. You're talking about uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the connecting interfaces. You're talking about the transistors that makes them happen. Then you're talking about this now new uh, medium, the phones. And don't forget, sir, that there are two phones that we now have. You have the non-digital phone, the analog phone. Then you have, of course, the digital, they call it smartphones. What the smartphone can do in connection to NIM and, and services and the network is different from what the analog phone can do. And the analog phone is a majority of what we have here. So how do you reconcile that? That's where you now have people to come in there. Then how do we move forward? Uh, the NIMC has been the custodian of this data to be able to be registered. Don't forget, NIMC does not own the biometrics IP that they use. These are foreign based on. Can they sabotage you because you don't have yours? Those are security issues and questions that you must be asking. What is the uh, issue within the biometrics or the registration, data registration that your people cannot design. You have about 750 digital hubs. You have the, um, the academia. Why can't we have a monumental challenge, too big to fail challenge for NIMSI to be able to organize a national hackathon just to get it right? All right? Then secondly, you can create an abridged solution even right now, that Ruben Abati 
uh, Dr. Ruben Abati can phone Nimsi and say, oh, I'm Ruben Abati, okay? But I don't have a name. Can you give me a temporary name? Of course, what's your phone number? Your phone number is automatically, because you've called, your phone number is automatically registered. Of course, the network that is supplying your, 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 your connectivity, we know the network because uh, NCC has issued the license. Those are variable data. So now we can respond and say, okay, you have a temporary name. We send it to you, okay? That will decrease all the stampede of everybody wanting to go to NIM. Then you are given three to six months to make sure that you can come for your picture and biometrics data. With that strategy, you are sorting out the data cluster of about, say, 40%, uh, percent because those are the people who own the smartphone. So now how do you resolve those who doesn't have the, 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 the uh, who have the analog phone? What we are saying is that there are many models that we can have, but we need to have a national standard of data capture. We need to have a harmonization gateway of how we do this thing. And of course, we need to build the commensurate manpower that has the skill to be able to do that. So when you engage this three-tier aspect, though your problem will still be a little bit uh, pending, but you must have probably solved all over what we are talking about, uh, say, about 80%. And uh, I'm sure Dr. Betty and uh, uh, my, my friend uh, Ruhun Fai will also acknowledge, because I know that they know that, really, why is it that we discontinue the, the NIMSI card to NIMSI number? Because those are the issues of budgeting, there's are issues of national policy and strategy. These things were, con uh, were contracted to foreigners at a very high rate in dollars. So when the dollar fell, okay, NIMSI was unable, again, to even, you know, print or get access to printed card. So that took almost about another two years for them to now to reconcile and have what they call you know, a rerouting of the processes where you now have the name that we are talking about, which is your, your number. So the card has been discontinued. So everything is now in the digital realm. So when you query your number, it goes into the server, and of course, all the strings of the data are there. So I think we need to appreciate the magnitude of the problem we face in the country going forward because of technology. Technology driving our life now, driving our homes, driving our, our, our education, driving, of course, our security, must be at the first port of call of attention of government. And as I said, unless we fix this triangular broken channel of education, academia, and government, sitting to, together and designing together and making sure that it works, a lot of people, we talk about Korea, we talk about China, we talk about US. These people are using multinational, uh, uh, the multinational aspect of uh, solution solving, be it in equipment, be it in research. But then they use their diaspora content more. We should be able to have had a COVID diaspora Nigerian handshaking committee sitting tax force sitting here. After all, some of the people who, of course, are within the aspect of the Pfizer vaccine, we have Nigerians there. You could see the vaccination that they've been giving the U.S. A lot of uh, African Americans, uh, most of them who are Nigerians, are the people who are dispensing this. What is the connection that we have with them to save our country, to save our world moving forward in the future? I think those are things that we need to do. We must admit that we've been acting alone. And that will not help. We need to act as a committee. We need to act as a team. Okay? Yes, we have the ministries, we have uh, the, the, uh, the boss committee and whatever. But I see, what are the professionals doing? Where is the technology? How are we going to move forward with detecting even future uh, viruses when transistors are not built in to people? Our, our kids are being kidnapped, and these are relationship issues mm. too. Very kidnapped all over the place and 400 people moving from places. And I could see when they were released, no one person was wearing a mask. Mm. Conventional wisdom will have said, oh, once you get these guys, 
you know, yes, you put them into clinical this thing, but let everybody wear a mask because they have been somewhere that we didn't know and they need to be tested and we don't know how 400 people can spread, you know, into thousands or 10,000. So I think those are some of the thinking things that no, we should they're, they're, they're really very pertinent if we have questions. a team. Yes. That's what very think. pertinent questions. I hope somebody yeah. somewhere uh, is listening to you. Thank you very much uh, for joining us on The Morning Show. Thank you very much indeed.